it's Kaylin and Elvin Mill Farm. Um, I've been rendering lard, so I thought now would be a pretty good time to do a quick lard rendering video, um, just to show you how I do it. There's a whole lot of different ways you can do it. Um, they all come out pretty much the same, um, but I use a crock pot because I like to walk away and forget it until it's ready to go. So I find this easier than putting it on the stove. So I guess I'll get started. Um, just pork fat. Um, it helps if the pork fat is cold. It goes through the meat grinder much easier and it's easier to slice. You don't want it frozen because when you're trying to slice it frozen, I find my knife slips sometimes. If it's just really, really chilled, um, knife goes through it fine. It goes through the meat grinder fine. Um, there are two types of pork fat that I've dealt with. Um, the first time we butchered hogs, the neighbor told me you can't render the other one and I never listened so I decided I was going to do it anyways. Um, I thought I'd make maybe suet blocks for um, my chickens. So I rendered my regular lard and then chopped up the lard he told me not to use and put it in the crock pot and oh my god that was the worst smell I had ever smelled as far as dealing with the pigs. Um, I don't render that anymore. I went ahead and made soap blocks with it um, just because I'd already done it. But these days when we butcher, I just take that kind of fat straight down to the chickens and they can just eat it straight off, you know, straight cut off the pig. I'm not doing that in my kitchen again. It was really gross. Um, but this is the kind that everybody uses to render down. Um, lard's good for frying in. A lot of people use it to make pie crust or biscuits. Um, I'm hoping to use this um, to make my soap with the lye and all that. Um, it's really pretty easy. Literally, you just take the cold chunks, cut it into cubes. Cube size doesn't matter. This is just so it'll fit through my meat grinder pretty easy. Um, you could probably put it in pretty big, but it would bog down the meat grinder some. Once you get it cubed up, um, you'll just need the meat grinder. This is not a really expensive meat grinder. We bought this one, I think about 10 years ago at Gander Mountain. It, we use it for deer, a little bit of everything. I'm gonna use the biggest plate and just fit that on the end, screw it on. This thing's pretty loud, so once I start actually grinding, you're not gonna be able to hear anything I say. So I'll be quiet while I do that. But just load up your tray up top. And you don't wanna to feed too many pieces through at a time. Um, it'll bog it down and it starts to make a funny noise when you do that. But just a few pieces at a time goes right through real easy. to do I'm just doing a very small crock pot full just to show you how I do it but I already have one of the big crock pots going um, I've used my turkey roaster for this the electric turkey roaster it works really well when you've got a whole bunch you're trying to do at once and we butcher we do two hogs for our family a year and the neighbor does I think two for his family and then he has friends who come over and sometimes butcher there. He's got some really nice meat working um, equipment. So a lot of them don't save their lard. And so I end up with everybody's and I end up having a deep freeze full of Walmart bags full of sliced lard. And I need to butcher some rabbits. So I needed to make some space 
in the deep freeze. So I'm trying to render up this. Once it's melted down, it takes up a whole lot more space than in big giant bags like this. Okay, so once you've got it ground down, um, next thing you do is take your crock pot. And I usually use the big one. And in the big one, you add a fourth a cup of water before you add your fat. This is a smaller one, so I'm literally just gonna add a little splash. The water cooks down as the fat renders and just cram it in here. Make sure, like I press it down pretty flat, but make sure when you're doing that that you don't have it hooved up on top. Um, I got in a hurry the first time I did this and didn't think about space, crammed it full, and when it finally started melting down, that pile sunk but overflowed once it became liquid fat. Then all you do once you put that in there, um, I'll grind some more in a little bit and fill this pretty full, but then you literally just put your lid on, plug it in, and um, if I'm gonna leave it overnight, I like to put it on warm, but if I'm gonna watch it throughout the day, I'll put it on low. Don't ever put it on high. I feel like it cooks way too fast doing it that way. And if it cooks too fast, it'll the crunchies will kinda give the fat a pork taste, which is fine if you're deep frying and that kind of stuff, but if you're wanting to use it in things where you don't want to smell, you don't really want it to look like that. I have two jars. I'm not sure you'll be able to see the difference, but this is one that turned out the way it's supposed to. It's pretty white and kind of snowy looking. This one got a little too done, and actually it's been sitting kind of towards the heat, so you can actually see how kind of golden it got. It has a pork smell. It's fine to use in the deep fryer, um, fry eggs, that kind of thing. But for things that I don't want to have any kind of a pork flavor, it needs to be this clean, snow white looking lard. Okay, so once you've got it cut up and you've got it grinded and had it in the crock pot and it's rendered down, it'll start to It'll start to get liquid on top, and you can technically, pretty soon after that, start scooping some of that out. Um, like I said, don't let it go too long. You can kind of see what my crunchies, they're not crunchy yet. They're still nice and soft, but what my fat globs ended up looking like. Um, stir it some, don't let it crust to the side because that'll give it that pork flavor. But once it, gets down to where you can start rendering it. And actually, if you look, you can see how white my drips are from my spoon rest. Once it starts getting to where you're ready to start bottling it, um, there's a couple different ways you can do this too, and I've done it a bunch of different ways. You could do it, take the entire crock pot and dump it through a colander with something in it to keep the chunks out, but I'm gonna do it in just straight into the mason jar because I don't feel like washing the bowl afterwards and because I have a tendency to dump it if I try to do the entire thing and then I get lard all over the kitchen. Um, so this is just a regular quart mason jar and this is my regular canning funnel. I've got cheesecloth in it this time. I've used all kinds of stuff for this. I've used coffee filters. I've used paper towels and napkins. Um, the paper towels and napkins, it doesn't go through quite so fast, so you have to kind of go very slow so you don't overfill it. I have not used the cheesecloth yet. Somebody gave me a package of cheesecloth, um, so I thought I'd test it out and see how it goes. But literally, just once it's melted down, grab you a ladle or something, and then you just dump it in. And I'm gonna kinda try not to get very many of the crunchy stuff out of the bottom, just because I wanna let them cook later and I don't wanna have to do this a whole bunch of times. Um, and you can see, it just filters straight through. All the big pieces are staying in the cheesecloth. When I use the turkey roaster, like I said, I get in a hurry. Um, so I do cheat sometimes and actually use a small saucepan because you can get quite a bit more in it than you do your ladle, so it goes a little bit faster. But once again, you literally just dump it in. Don't overfill the funnel. It will come out the top and then you'll have fat everywhere. But you literally just keep going till you get the jar full. 
And then after you've got all the liquid fat out, you can return the fat chunks back to the crock pot and let it cook a little longer. The fat you render out of that you can use for deep frying. Um, I'd mark it just to be on the safe side, but you should probably be able to tell because it'll have that golden color to it. Oh, and I am full. I'm actually too full. So this is probably gonna be a mess. Okay, so you can see it goes in the jar nice and easy. And it has kind of a clear yellowy type color to it, but it'll, as it starts to cool, it'll turn more white. Um, once I get the jar full, I just like to let it sit on the counter until it cools all the way, until it's snow white all the way through. And then I just put a clean lid on and jar it up and I leave it sit on my, um, pantry shelf you want to wait till it cools because in my opinion when you put it on while the oil is still hot it can get condensation um but I worry about that making it go rancid and like I don't store mine in the fridge I just leave it sitting out on the shelf I have yet to have a jar go rancid yet but there's always the chance that it will but I feel like keeping that moisture out um plays a good part in it lasting longer for me um I've got a whole bunch more to render and then hopefully once I've got all my lard rendered, um, I can order my lye and start making regular soap. Um, but like I said, super easy. Um, you can, if you don't butcher your own pigs, some butcher places will sell you lard. Talk to your friends who raise pigs. Not everybody saves their lard. A lot of people don't cook in fat. We cook pretty much everything in fat. Um, but just let people know you're looking for pig fat and you might be surprised the people who will holler at you and say, Hey, we butchered a hog. We don't save the fat. Do you want it? And then you've got a fun project to try. Thanks for watching. Bye.